I think experience is a really good teacher. And so I've been the recipient of really good onboarding and as well as not so strong onboarding. And so I think I really wanted to create a great first impression. And I read some something the other day where 30% of people leave their job within three months. For a, for a early stage company, investing so much time in recruiting only to lose someone within three months is like a huge time suck. And I mean, frankly, it's not really something an early stage company can afford. So therefore, like making sure your a company is setting someone up for success is so important. I think one of the most important things a company can needs to get right. And so at Entropy, because we were this remote around the world company and we were growing a bunch of engineers, onboarding a new commercial team, getting this right was super important. And I think the the cool thing about onboarding is a company can do with it what it will. And at Entropy, we use it as an opportunity to really document a lot of things that were living in the founder's heads. For example, what is the vision of the company? Like they have an idea, they've raised money off of that, but how are we, do we want to onboard people to what this vision is? What, how does that translate into our values? What's important to us? How do we show up to meetings? How do we interact with one another? What's most important right now? Um, and what are the teams doing to support those initiatives? How do we meet? How do we, um, how's our performance measured? What is it expected of me? Uh, All of those things, an employee, in my opinion, needs to get that information up front. Otherwise, it's this, this ambiguous space for a new hire that's, you know, trying to make a good impression and do the job well. Um, but in my opinion, might not be equipped to do that the best of their ability. So I think it's on the company to really um, to do this well. And uh, it's a huge miss, in my opinion, if, if people think that once recruiting is done and the paperwork is signed, that there's nothing left for the company to do. I think the, the lessons that I learned from building out an onboarding plan is it's really important to communicate what the initiatives are at a company and not just to the team that this new hire is joining, but um, that team's OKRs or big rocks, whatever, you know, whatever you want to call it, but as well as the other departments around the team, because it therefore gives a sense like here's what everyone is doing collectively to get to this one overarching company goal. Um, so I think that's super important to do. Like, let's let's create transparency around what everybody's working on. Um, the important thing there too is like by defining, hey, here's what we're working on, we're inherently creating focus. And therefore empowering everyone with the information of, hey, if you're not working on uh, this objective on your team, or if you see someone uh, maybe a little bit distracted, like we all have this ability to uh, create focus at the organization. Um, So I think that's super important. Like let's create transparency around what everyone's working on. Um, I think another big lesson that I learned was uh, the more specific you can be with new hires around expectations that could look like a 30, 60, 90, the easier it is for them to perform well. It's awful when a new hire joins and you just let them go figure things out. Like that, that's, that's too ambiguous for someone. Um, so I think what we did at Entropy was we co-authored 30, 60, 90s between a manager and a new hire. Um, oftentimes I was a founder and a direct report. And so that way it just kind of it established a baseline expectation. And, you know, as most things do change at early stage, priorities changed, expectations changed, mm-hmm. but we had at least a source of truth to help manage expectations and ultimately use that to help manage performance. Um, so that was, that was really helpful, like setting clear expectations. Um, I also think uh, another lesson that I learned was that uh, by defining what our onboarding process was, I could then as a chief of staff use that process and treat it like a product. And by having people go through the onboarding process, I could then get user feedback. Um, I get feedback from managers on like, Hey, what is good about this? What's not and, and iterate and improve upon it. Um, that's another cool thing about a chief of staff is, uh, 
the product that we get to work on is the organization itself. And so you know, when you're in the thick of it, you're getting all this feedback. And, and if you do it well, you can like create data sources around um, what is good about strategic planning or what could make this meeting more efficient. And you can kind of take those data points and slowly and in the background, iterate upon these processes that you own and, and at the end of the day are your product. And it's a, a super cool position to be in.